Spencer Strider is done for the season. Who can we add to replace him? We'll talk about that more in today's action-packed episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, we are your number one source for fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Matthew Ane. You can find me on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, at Matthew underscore Ane. Last name for you guys, if you're not watching on the tubes, is A-H-N-E. That's how you find me on Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the bell below to subscribe to the channel and give you a notification every time we drop a new episode. Also, please leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple or Spotify or wherever you may listen. Uh, It really helps out the podcast, and it goes a long way, trust me. And if you want more than what we offer in this 30-minute podcast, please check us out on Subtext and become a member of the Diamond Club. Um, It's free two weeks. You'll get waiver wire rankings, prospect call-up alerts, injury reactions, a whole lot more. Plus, you can ask us questions. So check us out. The link is in the description below, and I promise you won't regret it. It'll really give you that leg up on your competition, I promise. And from brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need at the right prices you want, it's easy to bring home the win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions may apply. eBay Motors. Guaranteed fit only applies for U.S. customers. Whew. Well, that was quick. But, man, I got to talk about this before we get in the show. Ain't that new drop hot? I love it. That new intro just gets me sizzle dizzle. Um, it's uh, It really just feels like Dom and I. And... Hopefully we get Dom back this week again. Prayers go out to him and his family. Um, hopefully we get him back some point this week. If not, it will definitely be next week. But we're back on a regular schedule this week, going from Monday to Friday. And we got a good episode for you. We're talking must-add players. So Spencer Strider, unfortunately, has to get the teach. Man, it, it, it's starting to feel like, you know, it's an outright, you know, transmitted disease here with tj it's just not great but uh, we got we got to do that i got some bats first then we're going to hit the arms to replace spencer strider at the second half of the show so let's hop into it and a couple of these guys are going to be stashes a couple of these guys are going to be you know um you know add right now but let's get rocking and rolling all right let's talk lars newbar right lars finally back off the 10-day il and He's already starting to make his presence known, Um, you know, with only seven at bats. He's already got a run. He's got a bomb. He's got three ribs, batting 286, walked two times to a strikeout with an OPS of 1159. So, I mean, obviously this doesn't describe Lars Newbar. If anything, I kind of feel like last year he kind of like was a disappointment for me. I had high hopes for him and I figured, okay, the guy's going to take a step forward. He kind of didn't. The power was kind of subpar and where I thought that he actually had more than what he produced last year. Now there still is a chance that he does take that step forward, but you know, maybe it was just all the injuries that kind of, you know, hampered what his, you know, overall production could have been. Cause honestly, I really thought he was going to be a 30, 35 home run guy. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm not, but I mean, quite honestly, his pace from 2022 through 290 at bats, he had 414 home runs already. And, you know, there was still a whole other half. So, at best, I mean, at worst, it could have been 28 home runs, um, you know, and quite honestly, a guy gets hot and there's, you know, there's another four home runs and he's at 32. So Lars Newpark, I really thought would have done it last year. He didn't, but hopefully this year he's not as injury plagued and he can do it. So right now, Lars Newpar is what, like 41% owned. So he's out there in 59% of leagues. So you know, why Why not add him? Uh, outfield has been ugly anyway with all the injuries and just not being a deep position anyway. So add Lars Newbar now, and, you know, we'll see what happens. There is always that upside. So I say 100% add him, and we're going to just, you know, kind of see what happens. Worst case, you drop him. Who cares? It's it's not a big deal. He's a waiver wire add. If anything, ride the wave. But all right, we're going to move on. We're actually going to talk somebody exciting now. Um. And I'm kind of excited to talk about him. It's more of a stash. He hasn't gotten the call yet, but it's somebody to now, I think, maybe watch 
if not add because he's absolutely killing it down in the minors right now. And that's Heston Kierstad of the Baltimore Orioles. I was about to say Ravens because I still got football on the mind somehow, some shape or form. But yeah, so right now in, in AAA, he's absolutely mutilating the ball. 57 at bats, 17 runs already, four doubles, seven bombs. Seven bombs in that 57 at bats. Let's go. 26 ribs. He's walked nine times to 13 strikeouts. He's batting a whopping 386. He's got an OPS of 1295. Everything looks great. Even his slug is an 825. His OBP is 471. He's looking good down in those minors. Now, I just wish that, you know, we can get a little baseball savant uh, action so I can look, do a little bit deeper dive on the minors, but that ain't going to happen. But Heston Kierstad is just looking great and looking like a force. Um, you know, Westberg isn't doing what I thought he would be doing. So there's opportunities to play. Um, you know, just in overall, there's opportunities to play. So Kierstad can get the call at any time. Him and Mayo could be getting the call. So, you know, I think Kierstad's going to be first. And I think it's kind of imminent. I mean, you know, he's already been brought up. They already kind of, you know, toyed with the options. And I think he can be up tomorrow for all that matters. But I don't know if I'm running out and adding him this second, but it's something to definitely watch. Uh, go to Bleacher Report uh, and, you know, set up a notification for the dude just in case he gets the ad. Even though I probably have Sleeper already downloaded and waiting for that call uh, just in case. So you can beat us to the punch and just, you know, get them, get them on your team right when he gets the call. It's up to you how you want to handle it. Uh, right now, I'm not in, you know. It's a little too early for me to stash prospects, but you never know. So that's why he's on the show. But all right, let's move on. Let's talk about Jerkson Profar. Not my favorite name of the day. I promise you that. But I feel like we need to talk about him. He is performing. He's not really like a long-term play, in my opinion. You know, he's never really been this like, you know, outstanding player that really like kind of blows you away, <laughs> you know. But in certain leagues, he is he is going to get the job done for you. So right now, let's let's ride the wave. He's he has fifty three at bats so far. He has six runs. He has five doubles. He has two bombs. He has ten ribs. Eight walks to twelve strikeouts. He's batting a whopping three twenty one. An OPS of nine forty eight. Like these are good numbers. But you know we can't forget that you know who he is as a player, right? and that he's not going to be this big high producer, but right now he's producing. So let's ride the wave and, you know, maybe start the week off with somebody that's going to be an instant impact. And the second he cools off, we drop him. You know, it's not like somebody I'm going to say, Hey, let's be attached to and, you know, say, Oh my God, we got to keep him. He's going to be our guy. Like, ah, no, it's, it's pro far. Like, no. So what I'm going to say is this pro far just needs to just be added. Let's ride the wave. And, you know, I get to say this now. We're in season. I forgot batting average off the waiver wire for me is something that's always a bonus. If they're hitting well over the last week, I'm going to add them. So pro far must add for now. But guys, before I go, uh, before I talk about these other names, I'll, I'll give you a little preview. Kevin Biggio and Michael Bush coming up right after the break. But before that, I do have an awesome sponsor for you <laughs> before I lose the mouse. <laughs> As we're talking eBay Motors, passionate drive and patience, the formula for the winning championship is also the what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up its to peak, to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlet, headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts, your number one ride or die will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Motors guaranteed fit, your parts are get is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're not burning rubber. You're not, I mean, you're, bur you're not burning rubber. You're not burning cash. With all the parts you need, or the price is what you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home that huge win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions may apply. eBay's guaranteed fit is only available for U.S. customers. And guys, we're also got a new sponsor for you. It's Monopoly Go. I've been told I'm competitive, and I know Dom thinks that as well. So if he was here, he'd be like, yo, <laughs> you are. So, well, okay, yeah. I have a competitive side, and we all do. So my, uh, my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. 
It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist of Monopoly where you play on not 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 one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards. It's crazy locations. Build an amazing city. Bring big money. Uh, you know, but the best part is is the messing with your friends. I can charge them rent, my iconic property, just classic Monopoly. But now I can also rob the, their vaults or their riches for myself. And, and the leaderboard shows me who's the biggest uh, Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with your friends and people all around the world in time tournaments and earn huge rewards. So get to the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now for free. The app at Google App Store or Google Play Store. <laughs> all right. And guys, um, I don't don't mind my angry little toddler. I apologize. It's locked on. NFL mock draft live on April 17th at 7 p at 7 Eastern streaming on locked on sports today, 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube or free on Amazon fire TV channel app. Find the ultimate six episode series on April 17th at seven Eastern to hear the, what and hear who the local um, local locked on experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even fantasy football angles. Locked on NFL mock draft is on April 17th at 7 Eastern, streaming live on Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or free on Amazon Fire TV channel apps. Also, guys, last self-promotion, I promise. Introducing the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast Diamond Club on Subtext, your ultimate fantasy baseball companion. Get real-time alerts right to your phone, including waiver wire rankings, instant call-up notifications, injury reactions, and a whole lot more. Stay ahead of your fantasy leagues by joining the Diamond Club on Subtext, where your path to victory begins. Subscribe now and elevate that fantasy baseball experience to new levels. And if you want to check us out, it is free for two weeks, so click the description below, get the links, and if you join, you'll also get those waiver wire rankings from today's episode. So join. I promise you're going to be better than everybody in your league. But all right. Man, <laughs> that was a lot. That was a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So let's get back into baseball now. And I got a good, I got a good name for you, Kevin Biggio. Now, again, I'm not stuck with him in terms of like you know, oh, he's a must add things like that. Like it's more of like, yo, he's performing. I'm not going to be tied to him for the whole season. You know, a couple years ago, this may have, may have been a different conversation. I thought he was going to break through, but he didn't. So he just, he is who he is right now. But he's performing, so let's ride the hot hand, right? You know, he has 42 at-bats, three runs, two doubles, a home run, five ribs, a stolen base. He loves to strike out because he's only got four walks to 14 strikeouts. But he's still betting 310. He has an OPS of 824. Like, those things look great for Kevin Biggio. Uh, I'm all about it. For, you know, just, you know, riding that hot hand, making sure that, you know, I'm able to get a guy that's producing instant in my lineup. Some guys are just having cold starts. And, you know, especially in the beginning of this season, I'm not I'm not opposed to starting just picking up a hot hand, riding them out for the week till they cool off, dropping them. And Kevin Biggio is one of those guys. Like, I, I can't say that, you know, how long he's going to stay hot. But, hey, I'm going to ride the wave until he's not. So Kevin Biggio must add right now. All right, and that's enough of Kevin Biggio. We're going to move on to Michael Bush, somebody we mentioned actually last Monday. And honestly, he's still relevant. He's still performing, and he's still, you know, not widely owned. I actually haven't been mentioning the, you know, owner's percentage. So let me just do that real quick before I get into him. So 41% for Lars Newpar, 29% for Kissing Here said. So people are stashing him right now. Uh, Jerickson Profar, 13%. Kevin Biggio, 13%. So you know, these guys are widely opened, and Michael Bush is 29% owned. So he's still out there in about 71% of leagues. You know, I, I feel we need to add him right now. I mean, we're down Royce Lewis. We're down Josh Young, and he's performing. So why wouldn't we, right? Like, Michael Bush is having a decent season, kind of something like I, I thought he was going to do. And I'm, I'm really happy he is, quite honestly. Um, So, so far this season, he has what? 45 at bats, seven runs, three doubles, four bombs already, nine ribs, 
Six walks to 12 strikeouts, batting 311, has an OPS of 1029. Uh, zero, one, zero, like, let's go, Bush. Like, Michael Bush is somebody that, you know, the Dodgers really didn't want to trade away, but they had to. So they, they just couldn't make room for him. So, you know, let's take advantage of that. And his last week was stellar. Three runs, three bombs, seven ribs, batting 318 on the week. 30, and now he's up to 35%. We need to add this kid. Like, it, it, he's not no longer a little hidden secret. Plus, he also has first base eligibility now. Okay. Michael Bush is now flexible. Let's go. Add him. Do not sleep on him. He's going to produce. And when he doesn't, drop him like he's hot. Who cares? Michael Bush must add right now. And I'm going to probably keep talking about him at least once a week until he's over 60%. I'm going to drill it. In your heads to pick up Michael Bush. All right. Now, we've all been waiting for, you know, what to do with, you know, how to handle starting starting pitchers pretty much now that Spencer Stride is hurt. And he's done for the season. So, we're going to talk Kyle Bradish. Uh, Bradish was working his way back from, from uh, I guess, whatever injury he had. I forgot. And honestly, I thought it was, it was elbow inflammation. I honestly really didn't think he was going to pitch this year. And right now, he's about he's throwing bullpens. He's going to get a rehab assignment it, like imminently. I already picked him up in one league, and I'm stashing him in my IL. And, you know, Bradish is somebody that really produced last year and was honestly like somebody I had ranked before he got hurt in my top 30 starting pitchers. Like, I was really high on Bradish. I know um, when we had Frank from CBS Sports on the podcast, he was high on Bradish. Like, you know, a lot of people are high on Bradish. So now that he has an opportunity to pitch this year, I want to I want to pick him up. I want to see what's going on. I, I mean, it's an elbow is a lot easier to kind of get over if you had just like a tendonitis versus like, you know, a shoulder, which is the whole rotation of your arm and how you're going to, you know, release point, all that stuff. Right. Whereas, OK, like once your elbow's fine, it's not really screwing up anything. So Bradish might be able to come back and be great. And if he comes back and even does, I'll say, three quarters of what he did last year, you're going to be very happy you picked him up because I was when I got him off the waivers last year. He's also only 26. But last year, he had 168 innings pitched. He had 168 strikeouts. He had a 2.83 ERA with a whip of 104.3. And here's the best part. His fit, fielding, fielding independent pitching, which is a stat if you had average defense behind you, this would actually be your ERA. Wasn't far off. It was a half a run difference at 327. Bradish really was performing last year. He's one of my favorite pitchers with coming into this year that I honestly wanted to target everywhere I went. But, you know, unfortunately, that elbow just didn't want to cooperate. And I'm just glad he didn't end up getting TJ. Glad they were patient with him. And the doctors were able to say, okay, dude, like, we could probably get you back. And here's the thing. We're not paying a draft price for him. We're picking him off the waivers. Like, we hadn't dropped guys, like, like, you know, we're exchanging uh, quarters at a, at a, at an arcade. Like, so why not, you know, take the ad and stash him for the next two weeks until he comes up. Cause I think that's when he's going to be back up. It's probably the first week of May and it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun when she's up and you're going to instantly get a leg up and a full tier added to your rotation than adding anybody else. Like you're going to get a top three tier guy in your rotation now. So add Kyle Bradish now because I'm pro I promise you another week he goes by, he starts getting that rehab assignment and that ownership percentage is going to jump from 35% to probably 80%. So get on it now early while I'm telling you. Whew. All right. So before I start talking other names like Ranger Suarez, Lance Lynn, Edward Cabrera, and Braxton Garrett, I have one last sponsor for you and then it's pure baseball till the end. Guys, we got a new sponsor today, and it's Yahoo Finance. Well, wouldn't it be great if you could see all your investments and retirement accounts in one place? With Yahoo Finance, you can cons consolidate your views from multiple accounts into a hub that access expert analysis you need to tend, tend to your entire profile uh, portfolio with confidence. I have an investment account with Schwab and a 401k with Fidelity, and I've been using Yahoo Finance to consolidate them into one place, which made which made it incredibly easy to manage them. From more than 25 years, tw uh, Yahoo Finance has been 
a brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned in investor or looking for an extra guidance, Yahoo uh, Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit brand uh, visit the brand behind every great investor. YahooFinance.com, the number one financial destination. YahooFinance.com. That's YahooFinance.com. All right, guys, let's talk baseball. And I got one for you. We got Ranger Suarez. Ranger Suarez is somebody that. Is having a nice season, has gone out against a couple good, you know, um, you know, teams and is handling his own. You know, not that I never thought he wouldn't, but he's still 46% owned, and that means he's out there in 54% of leagues, and he's going out there and doing his thing, and he's impressing me. He's going out against Pitt, who's is who's no slouch this year, I might add. O'Neill Cruz rocked the bomb yesterday. Uh, well, now two days ago for you guys, and you know, the team is moving and grooving. They're winning games, and he's going out there performing. Washington had a good start. And honestly, even that start against Atlanta, even though he had a 5-4 ERA, he still managed to put out 7 Ks. The Ks are up, which I'm liking. That's something he really was never before. He never had like a K per nine. He's always been a little bit b- below it. But, hey, this year he's over a K per nine. He has 17 innings pitch, and he has 19 strikeouts on the year. He has a sub-3 ERA at 2.65. He has a whip at .70. Like, yo, let's go. Like, he's doing his thing, and Phillies are looking pretty good right now. So, you know, Ranger Suarez, I think, is a great add. He's going to be a, uh, a roster stabilizer for you in your rotation. Help, you know, bring down the ERA, uh, you know, worst-case scenario. And best-case scenario, if this trend the strikeouts stick, He's going to do things for you and add to that and contribute there. And that's saying something. So Ranger Suarez right now is a must add for me. Like I'm adding him in a good chunk of my leagues right now. And, you know, if my, if my league, if my rotation's bad, Ranger Suarez is totally going to boost it and make it that much better. So add Ranger Suarez now. So we had another weird name here. Um, Somebody I never thought I was going to talk about again. I figured they were just going to be Mr. Irrelevant. But right now they're riding the hot hand and that's Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn, you know, where is he? Who's he playing for? Those are questions because you're probably like, what? Well, he's 28% owned for starters. And Lance Lynn is now on the cards. And it's interesting. He's actually doing all right. 37 years old, though. So I'm not going to count on him, you know, for anything this year. But right now I'm going to ride the wave. He has 13 innings pitch. He has 18 Ks. He has a 263 ERA. And he has a 1390 whip, which is not great. And his FIP is a 479. So those numbers aren't great either. So there's definitely, you know, bound for, you know, negative regression, obviously, because he's performing well above board. But hey, maybe the defense behind him is looking that much better because he did get lit up against Miami and he had a 771 ERA. But against the Dodgers and Philly, he didn't give up a single run. And that's really why he's on this on this podcast today. He was able to handle himself against two really good teams and that's where i'm just like hmm lance ling you caught my eye man i want to i want to see what you're what you're made of and even if we get like 65 percent of what he's done in the past lance Lynn will be a great starter for you for the season but even so even if he's just like he, he gives you two weeks of production till you pick until kyle bradish comes back and then lance Lynn takes a dip he's he's the easy drop candidate at that point but Let's pick him up now and, you know, see how long he can maintain this production. The second he's not, you drop him. Who cares? You know, we'll see. But if he goes like two, three weeks with having, you know, a bunch of like nice starts, then, hey, there's somebody we're considering to hang on for the rest of the year until until he proves otherwise. So Lance Lynn must add right now. I I can't even believe I'm saying it. So, yeah. And now we're going to talk Edward Cabrera. He's also coming off the IL. He's waiting for, I believe, a, a, what do you call it, a rehab assignment. And he's not like the most stable guy, but he's somebody that I always just have like a soft spot for because his upside is is pretty nice. You know, he's making another rehab start. So that tells me that if he's making another one, he'll probably be back at some point, either this week for the weekend or early next week. And I say, add him now. You can add him right to your IL if you have an IL spot. If you don't have an IL, I don't know if I'm adding him right now. I'd probably add Bradish over him at that point. But Cabrera does pose an ups- have, have an upside, especially in the case department. ERA, he's very finicky. He loses his, um, what do you call it, his um, self. And the control goes out the window at, at certain points. And that's the only disappointing part. But 
you know, last year was very, very indicative of that, but he was also, you know, on and off the IL as well, because he only managed to pitch about 99 innings. I, I watched him last year, you know, in the starts that he was good, he was great. And then the starts he was bad, he was bad. And, you know, whenever he got hurt, it took him a little bit to going, get going. But even though he had 99 innings pitch, he still had 118 strikeouts. And, you know, it just, it is what it is with him. But what I like about it is I'm hoping when we can see more of like what we saw in 2022, where he pitched 71 innings, he had 75 Ks, he had a 301 ERA and a 107 whip. Like that is like the upside, right? Even though I don't think it'll be low, low threes. If anything, I think it'd be like a three, five to three, seven, five ERA with well over a K per nine with, you know, a whip of like a one, two, five. And it, it's not great, but it's not horrendous either. That's completely mutilating your whip. So, Edward Cabrera, I think, is somebody that we need to really add right now and just kind of say, hey, this is the deal. This is who I'm adding, and, you know, I'll just take the production. If anything, you, you start him against good matchups and you sit him against bad matchups, or you drop him and add him all throughout the year because, I mean, quite honestly, not everybody's running out and they see the bad matchup. You know, just look the week out after and say, okay, save an add on Sunday, add him on Sunday, and then you have him for the week, drop him after. There's another bad start coming up. So you, you can play that game. It's I, I'm never opposed to doing it. Like, I'll drop somebody on Friday to pick up a pitcher. I know that next week they're going to have a good good start. So I'll add them on Sunday. I save the ad. I re-add them, drop the guy. I just added, and then I have him for that start. And then I, could, I, I do the same thing. I rinse and repeat and until he strings a couple of good games together or he strings a couple of good matchups together, and I hold him for a little bit. So, like, Eric Cabrera is, like, somebody you can kind of pretty much stream in and out of your lineup pretty constantly. So, you know, it's somebody that I would – I would consider, you know, adding right to your IL and stashing because who knows, his first start might be really nice. But anyway, let's move on here. Let's talk about Braxton Garrett. A guy I'm really disappointed got hurt. He's coming back off the IL as well. This is kind of like a stash episode almost, but Braxton Garrett, uh, unfortunately, was dealing with some stuff. And, you know, it is what it is. His shoulder as well, which also kind of scares me. But at the same time, Braxton Garrett just – it, it, it is a talent, um, probably one of the more underrated talents, in my opinion. I had him ranked pretty high, too. He was a top 40 pitcher for me. And, man, I just was pretty excited to get him almost everywhere. Braxton Garrett was what was primed to have, I think, a really good season. Last year, he really showed off his stuff. And, honestly, his ERA and his stats, honestly, don't even do it justice because once he started um, really getting going, he was he was ridiculous. And he still finished with three uh, 366 ERA. And I feel like it was probably better at some points. Um, so he had 159 innings pitched. He had 56 strikeouts. He had a 3.66 ERA. He had a 1.14 WHIP. And honestly, he has upside of having a low three ERA. He has upside of doing well over a K for nine. And the WHIP is pretty good. His control's good. He's got good pitches. He's got good stuff. He's got. He, he has decent velocity. He's not. He does not going to like completely blow you away, but he does have good stuff. Um, you know, and. I just, I love Braxton Garrett. And you know what Miami does? Miami just does good things with pitching. And on top of that, when he pitches at home, you feel even better about it. You know, it's a good ballpark for pitchers to pitch. And Braxton Garrett now in Stashy, because quite honestly, if once he starts making those those rehab games, it's going to be fun. He already threw six frames in a rehab outing. Um, you know, in AAA, it looks like they're probably going to give him another one. Uh, before coming up because you know he still has to ramp up himself but I think what one more and he could be up look at look look for this kind of news if they if he doesn't he's slighted to make a make a start next week this week and he gets X from it that means he's coming up this weekend so you know maybe the only guy I'm adding directly to my wave to my IL is Bradish but Braxton Garrett's a strong two in that and I, I wouldn't do both it's one or the other I'm not clogging up my IL but Braxton Garrett, somebody at least put on the watch list, set up a whole bunch of notifications to make sure that you have him and your eye on the prize. So, yeah, Braxton Garrett must must at least watch her ad. Um, but anyway, guys, thank you so much um, for for watching this week. Uh, it, I can't wait to have two of us back on the show, but it's been great doing it by myself. Uh, you know, thank you for the everydayers, new listeners, and please like, subscribe, comment, rate, review, and good luck this week. We'll be coming back tomorrow with a good episode i forget what i'm doing uh but it'll be a good one i think trade four in a way so stay tuned for that and we'll see you tomorrow peace